Many diehard PC gamers have been affected by Specfluenza. Symptoms of Specfluenza may include dizziness, swelling of the tongue, spouting off Atari and Sega marketing jargon from the 90s, and looking a gift horse in the mouth. But now there's hope. Steam Deck. You should use caution while playing Steam Deck. Patients with Specfluenza may experience gamer rage, spewing phrases like, those specs are too weak, or I'll wait for the Steam Deck too, or incessantly benchmarking. If you or someone you know is suffering from Specfluenza, consult your doctor about Steam Deck. Many Specfluenza patients experience a psychosomatic allergic reaction, which subsides over time as they start having fun. Cautiously remind them that having fun is what matters, and not the numbers in a benchmark result. And most of all, gently acknowledge that you can't beat the Steam Deck's performance to price point ratio. The biggest set of Steam Deck updates in months just arrived with massive changes to the stable branch. Plus, Emulation Station Desktop Edition gets a big upgrade, and is the Steam Deck coming to a retailer near you? Let's talk about it. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. All right, first up, the biggest thing we need to talk about is the fact that the Steam Deck is on sale right now. It's 10% off. So you can get the 64 gigabyte model for $359.10. You can get the 256 gigabyte model for $476. And you can get the 512 gigabyte model for $584. Now, all of this is to celebrate the Steam Deck's one year on the market. Uh, and it's also coinciding with the spring summer sale over on Steam. So if you haven't already, get yourself geeked up for some savings on Steam. Uh, this is pretty exciting stuff. The Steam Deck has never been on sale before. That's awesome. Next up, according to a report from Gaming on Linux, Steam Deck is hitting retailers in Hong Kong and Taiwan today as of the release of this video. So what does that mean? Well, Komodo, Valve's Steam Deck partner in these markets, has partnered with Acer to bring the Steam Deck and its official docking station to stores. This means that customers will be able to walk into select retail locations and buy a Steam Deck. But that's not all. The device is going to be available to demo, too. I'd be interested to see if there's going to be a kiosk mode added to the Steam Deck software to facilitate this, because otherwise I could see some vandal coming up and unlocking the file system and then just wiping it. But I think that if this is executed well, it'll be a massive boost for the Steam Deck. Hopefully we'll see an upward trend in the Steam hardware survey corresponding with this release. But I think it'll be an even bigger success for Valve if they themselves make the deck available at retail in Western markets. Imagine walking into a Walmart or a Target and having a Steam Deck demo kiosk. That would be fantastic, and it would get people who are not familiar with Steam into their ecosystem. Think about it. People who have no familiarity with Steam would be able to buy a Steam Deck sight unseen right there at retail. That would be awesome. Next up, over the weekend, we saw the release of Emulation Station Desktop Edition 2.0. For those uninitiated, Emulation Station is a beautiful graphical front end for organizing all of your games, your ROMs, and helping you seamlessly launch and manage your ROMs. The biggest element to all of this is the new theme engine taking away some view styles but adding variants which they say are essentially theme profiles. Now Jackson, the writer of this section of the video, said that he is a Windows convert, and what they showed in the 2.0 announcement video reminds him of the theming in LaunchBox's Big Box, which is a paid full screen interface that's similar to Emulation Station. Now Emulation Station already has some great themes, but this update should take theming to the next level. They also included a vertical screen orientation mode, also known as a Tate mode, which is perfect for all of those people who have a $700 vertical monitor in their Steam Deck powered arcade cabinet. There were a ton of bugs that were fixed along with speed and performance improvements that help reduce startup time and lower CPU usage. There are so many changes that we can't include them here in this video, so instead we'll provide a link down below for you to come through as well as their announcement video. Now let me ask you a question though. Why haven't you liked that smash button yet? When you do, you'll be well on your way to seeing more videos just like this one. You can also get subscribed so you don't miss the latest Steam Deck news here on the channel. Now I wanna give a special shout out to Dan Henschel, one of the newest patrons over on Patreon. It's because of folks like Dan and the 75 other members that I've been able to keep the lights on here. And we do have a lot of lights, so thank you. Next up, I wanted to highlight a few of the things that we're doing over on ViewSync. We've published a few interesting articles, and due to the uncertainty of the future of YouTube and other social media, we're investing in an independent platform. Friend of the show, Jackson Emch, had a write-up on how to rip Blu-rays using your Steam Deck and an external Blu-ray drive. It's a fascinating read, and I highly recommend you check it out. He also wrote an article about PlayStation Remote Play on the Steam Deck last week, and it's a great one, so check that out too. 
Then Emily and I watched the premiere of Ted Lasso season three, and I wrote an article about the little details that you may have missed in the season premiere. Finally, Emily posted her heavily biased ranking of her favorite Taskmaster contestants from seasons one through five. And I have to say, she dropped some spicy ones in there for sure. So what do the last two articles have to do with the Steam Deck? Nothing, but that's kind of the cool thing about ViewSync, right? It's tech, it's gaming, and it's pop culture. Check it out if you have a chance. Next up, when are we getting a Steam Deck 2? Now, in a recent interview with Rock Paper Shotgun, Lawrence Yang and Pierre-Lou Griffet dropped a few details about the deck. As has been widely reported, there won't be a Steam Deck 2 for a few years. Quote, just in case you were wondering, the Steam Deck is not in danger of being dumped and replaced by a new model. While the Steam Deck's success has made it even more exciting to look closely at what can be improved, according to Yang, he reckons a true next-gen deck with a significant spec bump in horsepower wouldn't be for a few years. And that's the absolute right decision, in my opinion. Most modern releases run fine on the current hardware. And that's because if developers care, all they need to do is target and test against the existing deck. If they don't care, they miss out on the opportunity to reach some 42% of deck owners who are mostly playing all of their games on deck now. Yeah, you heard that right. 42% of deck owners end up spending most of their time playing on the Steam Deck rather than on their PC. Again, quoting Lawrence Yang, the biggest surprise to me has been seeing how Steam Deck has changed the way people are playing their games. One thing we've learned recently is that of the people who have purchased the Steam Deck, 42% of them end up spending the majority of their Steam gaming time on Steam Deck, preferring it over other devices. I'm wondering if they're counting folks like me, who almost never played games on their PC despite having a huge Steam library, because it was just too much of a hassle. Sitting here at my desk where I work all day, just to switch over into game mode to relax, not really my style. So I'm wondering what this all means going forward. Well, the deck will continue getting new features, SteamOS will continue to mature, and compatibility will continue to grow. We're years out from a Steam Deck 2, but when it does arrive, perhaps in 2025 or later, it will have a robust ecosystem that will translate well to new and more powerful hardware. Okay, last Friday, we talked about a Steam Deck OS preview update. Well, on Monday, Valve rolled out those changes as a stable Steam Deck OS upgrade. This means that real-time ray tracing is now available on Steam Deck. This is a phenomenal turnaround for a SteamOS update, from preview to beta to stable in just a few weeks. And then on Wednesday, Valve released a massive Steam Deck client update. This incorporates the long-awaited LAN feature that we talked about a few weeks ago as a beta. Now, LAN game transfers are amazing. This is a feature that allows Steam users to copy existing Steam game installations and update files from one PC to another over a local area network, without having to download and install from a Steam content server on the internet. This helps you stay below your ISP's monthly transfer limits and can speed up installs or updates. Now that local network game transfers are mainstream, you can have a game downloaded to your PC, and when you go to install the same game on your deck or another PC on your network, you'll download it from your original PC rather than from the internet. Depending on your local network and your connection speed, this should be significantly faster than downloading it from the internet. But they've also added more cool stuff like HDR options for developers to test against in the developer settings. They've added streamable games in the ready to play filter, streamable meaning locally from your gaming PC, and game invites in the quick access menu will now default to opening in a context menu to accept rather than having to navigate to the chat tab to hit accept. And as you can see on screen right now, this is a positively massive update and I've only touched on a fraction of the changes here. You can check out the change log with the links below. Now, the last thing I want to cover is the imminent release of Steam Deck OS 3.5, as reported by PC Gamer. According to their article, we should be seeing a few core features receiving an upgrade in the new release. First and foremost, a new Linux kernel. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is the first time that we've had a uh, Linux kernel update for SteamOS uh, since the Steam Deck was released. This is sure to bring with it some performance improvements and under the hood upgrades, but what most folks probably won't notice. In Pierre Lou's own words, quote, it means getting closer to the latest and greatest with lots of good additions, performance fixes, and functional fixes, as well as performing all kinds of aspects of the system. In terms of the core functionality and running games and the performance, those kinds of fixes at this point are mostly out of the way, so you won't expect anything transformative here. But then Pierre Lou goes on to describe one of the biggest changes. 
There used to be a hard-coded behavior in the Linux kernel on the AMD side, where if a core goes to sleep, it invalidates its cache because by the time it wakes up, the cache might not be valid. It turns out that when you have two threads on the same core and one thread is working on something and the second SMT thread goes to sleep, it throws away its cache using the same logic. So the thread that's running suddenly loses its L3 cache. In terms of CPU, that's really bad. It has to kind of refetch everything from memory. Lots of latency, basically a bubble in computing. This is fixed in the latest kernel thanks to AMD, and it's getting rolled out to Steam Deck users via SteamOS 3.5. Now, one major difference between Windows and Linux is that the Linux kernel typically contains most of the drivers that you need for your hardware. The same is true for graphics cards. AMD has open source drivers that are already a part of the kernel, and because the kernel is getting updated, we're naturally going to get an updated AMD driver as well. With that, we should see some power and performance improvements too. The next DecOS release is going to be a good one, but it will need to go through the normal testing in the preview and beta channels before it becomes stable. Now make sure that you get subscribed to stay up to date with all the latest news about DecOS 3.5. We're going to be following this story intently on the channel here in coming weeks, but also over on ViewSync. Now I want to thank the 76 folks over here who make what I do a reality. It's because of these guys that I'm able to continue growing this show, so thank you. Uh, if you believe in the work that I am doing and you want to help the show grow, consider becoming a patron, a YouTube member, or a ViewSync Premium subscriber with the links below. It's all greatly appreciated. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>